The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved brothers and sisters, this is Advent. Can you believe it? That despite all that we have passed through in this COVID-infested 2020, we are here. We thank God for another church's year. The year of the church, year B, and better things are coming. As I woke up praying this morning, I said to God, as we look forward to the year 2021, may the year be of good behavior. Because the year 2020 has not really behaved well. It is a year that has shut us in that has made us to hide our smiles and has made a lot of things difficult. But if there is anything, any great lesson we have learned from COVID-19, it is that family and community is the most important thing. This is the lesson from COVID-19. We all had to depend on our family and on our community. And this is why God wants us to listen to him. We are a community. Advent is four weeks of preparation. Whenever you want to do anything important, you've got to prepare. To cook a good meal, it takes time, you prepare for it. We were told in the seminary that Inadequate preparation provides you for poor performance. Poor preparation prepares you for poor performance. The five Ps. If you do not prepare well, your performance is going to be poor. So we have four weeks and we light one candle each week to light the way for Christ. When you go around the neighborhood, you see the Christmas lights are coming on. Beautiful. At the neighborhood, in front of buildings, and it's so lovely. But it only points to Christ, who is the light of the world. In John chapter 8, from verse 13, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In John chapter 9, after healing the man born blind, he says, so long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. In Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14, he says to us, you are the light of the world. So we celebrate a season of light. We are called to be light wherever we are, to dispel the darkness of hate, the darkness of segregation, the darkness of racism, the darkness of violence, the darkness of destruction of human life. We are to shine the light and show the way. The four Christmas candles of Advent each week has an assignment. The first week is the week of hope. And this hope will not fail us. The second week is the week of love. Because it is hope 
that gives us the gasoline to love. And then the third week, the Gaudete week, is the week of joy. We're already anticipating the coming of Jesus. And in this joy, we now come to the last candle and the last week, the week of peace. So Advent gives us four gifts of hope, of love, of joy, and of peace. We need hope. The first reading from Isaiah chapter 63. What happened before Isaiah prophesied? You know, Israel continued to multiply sin and apostasy and disobedience and idolatry and they roused God to jealousy. And God sent prophets and messengers to draw their attention and they disobeyed. They did not fear God enough. And so God has no option than to allow the Assyrians and the Babylonians to take them into exile. And that is how God trains the people of Israel. They go into exile. When they repent, he returns them back. And so the prophet today cries, Shepherd of Israel, save us. Tear the heavens and come down. We are the clay, you are the potter. Do not abandon us to the works of our hands. We have sinned against you. The cry of the prophet Isaiah is our cry today. The world experimented with evil and we landed in COVID. We've got to pray like the Israelites. Shepherd of Israel, save us. Let your face shine upon us, O God, and we shall be saved. Why not use this Advent as a time to pray for the world? And you can do it. The second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians says to us, I thank God each time I think of you, because all of us, are equipped with the spiritual gifts to pray, to seek God. God has given us assignments. I, as a preacher on the altar, and you, as a preacher in the world. I am like the teacher in the class. I give you assignments, and then you go into the world where you work, where you teach, where you sell, where you operate, and do the assignments. And you are able to do it because God has given you all the spiritual gifts in Christ Jesus. So watch and pray. A very short gospel from the Gospel of Mark today tells us to watch. Be awake. No more sleeping. Be at alert. Because the master can come at any time. He could come in the morning at midnight, in the early watches of the morning, even at dawn. But whenever he comes to call us, may we be ready. As a scouter, I remember the scout rule number one, always be ready. Every scouter is a brother to another scouter anywhere, anytime in the world. Scout rule number one, be ready. And those days, when you see the scoutmaster, I remember, he will just shout, Kim, and he will answer, Kimbo, always ready. I remember a day in the market, I was going with my mom for grocery, and my mom saw me suddenly become stiff, Kimbo, because I have seen my scoutmaster. Jesus is the supreme scoutmaster. He wants us to be alert, to be awake, not to be sleeping. He wants us to use all the spiritual gifts he has given to us to shine his light in the world. And you can do it. Beginning from your home. Charity begins at home. So as we continue in this week of hope, Barack Obama talks of the audacity of hope. Hope is the last thing 
to die in man. Hope keeps us hopeful. Hope makes us to be alive. That God, Emmanuel, will live among us. O come, Emmanuel. Let us rise and profess our faith in the hope of the soon coming King. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. The God. Of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. With him all things are made. For us as men and for our salvation, he came down to heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken with prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. As we wait, with longing the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, let us with renewed devotion beseech his mercy to bring the good news to the poor. That Christ may visit his holy church and keep watch over her always, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That Christ may fill the Pope, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops with spiritual gifts and graces, let us pray to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. That under the protection of Christ our times may be peaceful, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Have that Christ may guide the minds of those who govern us to promote the common good according to his will, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord. That Christ may banish disease, drive out hunger, and ward off every affliction, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have yeah, mercy. Yeah. That Christ in his mercy may free all who suffer persecution, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord have yeah. mercy. That as witnesses to Christ's love before all, we may abide in the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for the in special intention of this Mass, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. That Christ may find us watching when he comes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the intentions we now hold in our hearts and in the parish prayer book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty ever living God, who brings salvation to all and desire that no one should perish, hear the prayers of your people and grant that the courage to rule in the world may be directed by your peaceful rule through Christ our Lord. 